So in this tutorial, I want to start using Scratchpad to actually help solve problems. Now, Scratchpad and JavaScript are not going to get you completely through. You still have to draw pictures as needed. So let's say that we have a problem where in, well, let's draw it and set it up and see what we can do. So I'm drawing a coordinate system here, and this is going to be a uh, force balancing problem. So let's say that I have one force acting this way, one force acting that way, and let's put a third force acting over here. And what we want to do is balance these out. So uh, let's say, let's call this one F3. Let's call the blue one F1, and the red one we'll call F2. So those represent the magnitudes. There are angles here. So the angles are generally measured with respect to the positive x-axis, which is over here. The positive y-axis is over there. Okay, so uh, that first angle that I drew, let's call that theta 1. This angle here, I'm going to call that theta 2. And now, here's where things get maybe a little bit complicated, depending on how you want to do it. Um, I'm, we're going to do this in two ways, as a matter of fact. The angle from the negative axis, we'll call that theta 3, and let's use a light green, hopefully you can see that. From the positive x-axis, we'll call that theta 4. Right. So, um, here's the deal. The equations that we could use, uh, let, let's say that we are given... Mm -hmm. F1, F2. Um, we're also going to be given hmm, that's terrible theta. Let's try again. Theta 1, theta 2. What is the direction and magnitude? F3. So basically we need F3 uh, as a magnitude and theta 3. Now, magnitudes are always positive, so really that angle is going to be uh, kind of important. So let's set this up. There are two ways we can set it up. The first way we can set this up here is by making use of theta 3. If we do that, we're going to say that the sum of these two forces, F1 and F2, are balanced by F3. This is this requires maybe some a priori knowledge of that direction. So let's go ahead and put that together. So we would write F1, we're going to break it in the x direction, F1 cosine theta 1. So that is this component. Let's see if I can draw that. That is this component right there. That's F1 cosine theta 1. And uh, draw this sort of dotted line down here. All right. Um, plus F2. Oops, I'm still doing this one. F2 cosine theta 2. And all those have to be equaled out by F3 cosine theta 3. Now, let me explain why all that works in theory. Here's my F2 cosine theta 2, and in green, let's make that line, there's my F3 cosine theta 3. So really, the magnitude of the blue plus the red here uh, must equal the length of that green. That's really what we're saying here. Uh, we can likewise write out in the y direction F1 sine theta 1 plus f2 sine theta 2 equals f3 sine theta 3. So all that should work, um, but it will give me that angle with respect to the negative x-axis. So let's code that up here. Um, so going over here, Shift F4, that gives me my scratch pad, 
and I'm going to move that over. Pull my other. Uh, let's see if we can keep that in the frame of view. Um, I'm grabbing the wrong stuff here. Try that one more time. Chrome, Firefox, or Scratch Pad, and over here we want this guy. Okay, and we want to make that a little bit smaller so we can see that equation. Now, of course, for any of this to work, ultimately we're going to need numbers. Scratchpad is a, uh, a place where you can do programming, but it's not a symbolic manipulation uh, platform. So, let's see how to do this. Well, we're going to have to leave some space for F1, F2, Theta 1, Theta 2, and we're ultimately looking for F3. So I think we have a little bit more work here before we program. So we could solve for F3 first. So F3 from the... F let's label these equations. F3 from the first equation would be equal to all the junk here on the left. So F1 cosine theta 1 plus F2 cosine theta 2 over cosine theta 3. It would also equal from equation 2 f1 sine theta 1 plus f2 sine theta 2 over uh, not cosine but sine theta 3. You set those two equal to each other and what you end up finding here so let's actually take this, we're going to copy it, sorry if you're hearing extra loud, extra noise here, the lab's a little busy in the background here, so we can set those equal to each other, and then there's something really kind of interesting that's going on here. Um, we can, using algebra, show that this goes over there, and that all of this stuff here can go back over that way. So th those two can exchange places. Uh, I'm not going to go into the algebra, I'm just going to do it right now. And so what I find is that I have a sine theta 3 over cosine theta 3, which of course is equal to tangent of theta 3. And all of that is equal to so f1 sine theta 3 plus f2 sine I put a theta 3 there, I'm sorry it's a theta 1 sine theta 2 over here all of that over f1 cosine theta 1 plus f2 cosine theta 2 all right so now we're at a point where we actually can use Scratchpad. So let's assign some numbers. So uh, let's just say that F1 is equal to oh, 10. We can't put units there. We might put a comment there with units of units. F2 equals, oh, let's say, 20 newtons. Theta 1 equals oh, 60 degrees. Theta 2 equals 30 degrees. Now, those are our givens. Um, let's convert some things over. So, uh, the thetas, theta 1 radians is equal to theta 1 times math pi over 180. Theta 2 radians equals theta times math pi over 180. You could just as easily, if you want to make it really clever, you could do this. Pi equals math pi over 180. And then you could get rid of all this stuff. You could write that as pi. You could write that as pi. And so this is conversion to radians. Notice I'm labeling my code so I can see what I did later. Now, I can also do some stuff here uh, to simplify some of the algebra later. 
I could write S1 for sine 1 equals math sine theta 1 r. Sine 2 is math sine theta 2 r. Cosine 1, C1, is math cosine theta 1 r. And C2 equals math cosine theta 2 r. Now if everything works out, I can input this formula. And here, I could write T3 equals put it all together. Parentheses F1 times S1 plus F2 times, in this case sensitive, times S2 divided by parentheses F1 times C1 plus F2 times C2. Okay, and um, that will give me the tangent, and if I want the actual angle, uh, theta 3r is going to be a tan math a tan theta 3 and if I want theta 3 in degrees that'll be math that'll be theta 3 r times 180 degrees divided by I screwed up here. Um, I screwed up here. I'm very sorry. And let's do that. Okay. Here we go. And this is one of the advantages. When you make a mistake, you can see what you did. So now, um, put it all together. Maybe I want to get that theta out. I might do a console log. 3 equals, and this is with respect to the negative x-axis, and let's actually figure out what the net force is. Uh, F net equals math square root F1 times F1 Let's hold that thought. I want to come back to that. Let's just do this to begin with. So now um, we've got that. Let's make sure that we have a, the right scope on our window. Let's go this way and back to scratch pad. All right, so we have the right scope, and if everything is correct, control R to run it. We get theta 3 is equal to 39.89 degrees. <coughs> And so that is with respect to the negative x-axis. How can you tell if it's up or down? Well, in this case, you have to go back to the diagram um, because of how we did this. We, we set this up. Now, if we want to do this with theta 4, um, I'll show you how to do that in the next screencast. But essentially what we're going to do is we're going to have the sum of the forces equal 0. And then we can get the orientation of theta uh, based on um, what theta 4 is, so it could, in theory, have been up in the second quadrant. We'll also, in the next screencast, actually get the uh, magnitude of f. This is now starting to get a little bit long, so I'm going to pause here.